me? Still says seven waiting. It says we're live. Oh, okay. Now it says eight watching now. Can you guys hear me? Hello, Nicole. Oh, did somebody say something? Yeah. They can hear you? I think so. I'm watching. Can hear you. Okay, they can hear me. Kim says they can hear me. Hello, Kim. Hello, Annie. One of my best friends in middle school, her name was Annie. She looked like an Annie. She was so cute. I don't know. Annie's such a cute name. Just give them another minute or two. Okay. Or 21, 22. Wow. Mm -hmm. right. I think you can probably start to slow roll. Meg, I recognize that name. I'm going to check the audio. <clears throat> oh, London. Wow. I wonder what the weather's like in London. <laughs> we got like six inches of snow this morning. I'm turning the thing on. All I see in my picture is these two things. Is that okay? What picture? Dee Dee made it. Annie's from Texas. I bet it's nicer there than it is here today. That's for sure. Ah, uh, Texas warmth or snow? Snow's okay once in a while. Oh, Minnesota. Oh, no, you're saying, hey, Minnesota mama. <laughs> now you said you're from Minnesota. Reykjavik. Oh, cold. Yeah. Oh, that's the guy from Station. North Carolina, sunny. Texas is rainy. UK. Wow. <laughs> We're getting people from everywhere. That's so fun. New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand. Always wanted to go there. I'll get there someday. Stockholm. Oh, Stockholm is cool. Rainy and windy. Love Stockholm. Stockholm was very cool. New Zealand, I got to get there one of these days. New, G New Jersey, Melbourne. Wow, Melbourne. Didn't get to Melbourne either. I'll have to get there too. <laughs> France, love France. Windy. Tell me it's snowing. Crave Beauty sunscreen. Definitely going to review that one soon. Washington State. Have I been? I don't think I've been to Washington State either. That's a place I got to, I'm afraid if I go to Washington state, I'll never leave and I'll move there, which I guess wouldn't be that bad. India, North India. Wow. Really? Wow. And it's cold. I would think it's warmer there. Tel Aviv. See, didn't, we didn't get to Tel Aviv yet either, but we got, Jerusalem. we got to Jerusalem, not Tel Aviv, but Tel Aviv looks amazing. Haifa, Haifa Dead the Dead Sea. Dead Sea was amazing. You actually float, unlike my dad, who somehow managed to not float and then got it in his eye. So that was, that's my dad. He's like allergic to water. I don't know. He's dangerous. Even like an inch of water, I think he could probably need a lifeguard. So, oh, that's the cameraman. You guys hear him in the background? Hi. Camera, do you have a <laughs> microphone? No, it didn't work. No. We're going to get a microphone for next time. So which camera am I looking at, by the way? The one. This one? Yeah. Okay. Because on the screen, all I see is the two toners. Is that okay? Your screen? Yeah, my screen on my computer. But I see myself on your computer. That's this, yeah. Oh, you know what? It's because you never started the stream. What do I have to do to do it? I don't know. Try hitting refresh. Refresh. Let's see. There we go. Now I see myself. And the computer didn't break, so I got that going for me. Yeah. There we go. Now I see myself. Oh, but now and I hear myself. The computer didn't break, so I got that going for me. Yeah. There, we go. there we go. I muted myself. You should get going. Okay. Yeah, 40 Philly. Wow. Okay, guys. So I'm just going to start off uh, for the first part with the final showdown in the Super Bowl of toners, which lasted longer than the Super Bowl itself. So uh, let me just do a quick recap of it. So initially I had 17 toners and I asked my patrons to eliminate one. And I was actually surprised. They eliminated the Kiehl's Calendula toner. I thought they'd eliminate the Cream Shop one. Is that out of all of them, probably my least favorite. But we eliminated the Kiehl's. It's a pretty 
bland, not too exciting product, but it's a decent one. So anyway, so we eliminated that one from the start. And then uh, we had the first round winners, which were Peach and Lily, The Ordinary, Youth to the People, Isn't Tree, The Cream Shop, Claire's, Paula's Choice, and Casa Rx. So those were the finalists. And then out of those rounds, we were left with four toners, The Ordinary, Isn't Tree, Claire's, and Paula's Choice. And then out of those matchups, we were left with these two finalists. So I was a little bit, you know, these are very reliable, great toners. So I wasn't too surprised that they came out ahead. Although I really thought that Claire's would make it to the finale. I really, it's probably one of my favorite ones. Although I've got like probably a hundred favorite ones. So uh, anyway, so these are the two finalists. So uh, Hawaii, wow, that's crazy. Does my cameraman shovel the driveway? You know what? We have a snow plow because our driveway is really long and uh, it broke like three weeks ago and it and it's broken. Like so some shop has it and I don't know if I'll ever see it again. <laughs> so, yeah. So we've got a friend who's supposed to come plow. Hopefully we'll see. <laughs> so and underneath all the snow is like a thick layer of ice because it's just been melting the last week. So it's treacherous out there. I haven't fallen yet, but I expect to at some point. There's a couple of close calls there. So <laughs> is the cameraman your cousin? No, my husband, not cousin. I don't really have many cousins. You know what? They all live very far away. So I wish I had more. So many people have good cousins that they're close with. So okay. I'm just trying to read all the comments. So okay, so. The final two, so I've got uh, these two, and I think I'm just going to start with packaging. Uh, both of these have very good packaging. The Isn't Tree uses a more opaque bottle, uh, which is better if you leave it on your cabinet. The sun doesn't come through and zap it. The Ordinary is a clear bottle, although I love the uh, needle nose tip snout. I like to call it snout. I don't know. So overall, I'm trying to be more decisive instead of having so many ties. So right off the bat, I gave the Isn't Tree a point because their bottle's opaque. Uh, then we moved on to alcohol. Neither of these contain denatured alcohol. So that was a tie. Couldn't really make a decision on that one other than a tie. Fragrance. So the Isn't Tree is fragrance free. It does smell like tea. While the Ordinary contains rose water. Again, soothing for some people. Uh, some people with sensitive skin can be irritated by it. So overall, it's probably uh, better left out for most people, especially if you have sensitive skin. Uh, Tasmanian pepperberry. I've been doing more and more research on that one. And some people can be sensitive to it, but overall, it can be a very good antioxidant and very good for skin soothing. So overall, I'm not going to knock them for that inclusion, which I have in the past, but I read about it for like four hours last night. So uh, so you don't, anybody can be sensitive to anything. So I didn't knock them for that. But overall, the rose water can be more potentially irritating. So for fragrance, I gave the point to Isn't Tree. And they are in the lead now by two points. Then we go to manufacturing location. Uh, the Ordinary Made Canada, no issues with that. And I'll talk more about manufacturing locations. Uh, and I had a couple of questions, so I'll be talking about that shortly. Uh, and then the Isn't Tree is made in Korea. Overall, no issues with either of those places. So I gave them a tie for that. Uh, beneficial ingredients. So the Ordinary uses glycolic acid. Uh, corn flour, which is actually something that's grown in Minnesota, which is a good antioxidant. Uh, aloe, ginseng, glutamic acid, triethanolamine, sucrose, fructose, urea, and then more than 10 different amino acids, which I don't want to list individually, but that's right there, a long list. Uh, the Isn't Tree has a lot of good things in it. Green tea extract, ginkgo biloba, uh, willow bark, centella asiatica, blueberry, uh, Olmus davidiana root, evening primrose, uh, hyaluronic acid, alantlin, licorice root, and hydroxacetophenone. So uh, overall, the list is pretty close. However, once you individually take account each of those amino acids, the ordinary has more beneficial ingredients in it. So uh, they get the point for that. It's hard to compete with that. Once you got 10 right there, boom, boom, boom. It's a hard list to compete with for anything. So uh, right now, the ordinary disregarding the ties has one point and Isn't Tree has two. Uh, acneogenic ingredients. So the ordinary has triethanolamine. 
polysorbate 20, which is a fungal acne trigger, and then hexylene glycol. So not many, but a few. And the isn't tree has uh, no real issues of concern and is fungal acne safe. So isn't tree gets this point. So isn't tree is up uh, three points and the ordinary has one. Uh, in terms of cruelty free status, both are cruelty free. It's a tie there. Performance. So obviously both of these have a little bit different goals. Uh, the ordinary is meant to be kind of uh, Exfoliant helps removing surface layers of dead or flaky skin, uh, which in my opinion, doesn't leave the skin feeling dry. It has a pH of 3.6, so it's in that range for a good exfoliant. Uh, the Ordinary does a good job exfoliating, but it never leaves skin feeling dry, tight, or red, which some products absolutely do that. Uh, so for many people, you can use this in place of a normal leave-on exfoliant in your routine because it's strong enough to exfoliate skin and prevent clogged pores. Uh, and then I've also uh, had a lot of people, did I skip ease of use? I think I did. I'll go back to that in a second. That was a tie. Okay. Anyway, so performance, man, I'm just like buzzing right along, aren't I? So, okay. So does a nice job exfoliating. Uh, the isn't tree does a nice job refreshing skin. Uh, if you use it with a cotton pad, helps remove leftover dirt or debris or sunscreen from skin after cleansing, leave skin feeling pretty soft, uh, slightly more hydrated. I also like to use it as a toner or kind of mist it onto skin. And uh, the isn't tree has a pH of 5.8, so it's not exfoliating. It's right in that good pH range. Uh, skin's natural pH is 5.5. So for performance, I gave the point to the ordinary. So they're doing pretty good. Okay, then I'll go back to ease of use. Uh, so with the ordinary, I've actually, since I've started this, I've gotten a lot of people that have commented with uh, various alternate uses for it, which really surprised me. So uh, if you want to use it traditionally, I recommend applying it to a cotton pad, smoothing it over skin. Don't rinse it off uh, and let it exfoliate. And then moving on to your uh, serums and your routine. Uh, other people have mentioned that they use it for uh, KP, Kaleido, <laughs> I'm not gonna pronounce it right. Ketopolarisis, I always say it wrong, but it's little bumps. I get them like on the back of my arm in winter in times when you're wearing like tight clothing. So people have used it for that and it's really helped them. People have used it as a deodorant, which was amazing to me. I'd never thought of it. I'm gonna have to try it. Uh, and then other people have used it like on their knees or elbows or anywhere to exfoliate skin. So uh, leave a comment if you have another use for it, because I'm finding out it's multi-useful, multifunctional. Yeah, what? Yeah, sir. Oh, our snowplower guy is here, finally. <laughs> so I can leave the house later today if I want. Okay, so very easy to use. Uh, the isn't tree, you can use it with a cotton pad. Uh, you can pat it onto your face. You can use it in a mist. I'm going to replace it in one of my mist bottles that's now empty. I'm going to pour this in there. So uh, both are very easy to use. So I gave them a tie for that, which was very hard. I didn't want to give any ties out if possible, but overall they're both multifunctional and very useful. So, uh, okay, so let's see. Chicken skin, yes, that's KP, chicken skin. That's what the back of my arms look like all winter. And uh, yeah. Okay, so we did performance. So overall we've got several ties and the ordinary and isn't tree are actually, I believe, tied at this point. So I will go to price, which involved a little bit of math. And the ordinary is the full size eight ounces and it sells for $8.70 in the US anyway. So overall the price was 92 cents an ounce, which is super affordable. I wish my Starbucks coffee was that cheap. Maybe it is. It's expensive, whatever it is. It's like $5 for a latte, I don't know. Anyway, uh, the isn't tree is 6.75 ounces. And it retails for about $18, but always shop around because it, the prices can be so different on different websites, even just varies by the hour on some of them. So it's worth doing some shopping. But overall, the average is $2.66 an ounce. So overall, the ordinary is really much more affordable. So they got the point there. Oh, the isn't tree compared to the more Pacific. You know what? I'll answer that when I'm done with this, but I really like both of them. Did you see Hawaii? What's Washington and the... Oh, I see Germany too. 
Hawaii, Washington, and Germany. That's crazy. Hawaii, I went to once. Honolulu. Oh, there's so much stuff to do there, but it's so hot. And then uh, the It Factor. So the Ordinary is really kind of a unique product in that it's a good exfoliant toner. And when it came out, I don't really know that there was a ton of them out there. But now since they've created this, there's a lot more exfoliant toners. You see the People, Peach and Lily, Murad has one. They're kind of popping up everywhere. So, and I, I kind of wonder if The Ordinary kind of started that. They start a lot of trends. So, I don't know. They start a lot. Why are you laughing at me? I'm laughing at the comments. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I like that. That's all good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi from Italy. Wow. Oh, thank you so much. Hey, tell them to give too you kind. A thumbs up. Give me a thumbs up. What does that mean? Oh, thumb up on the thing. Yeah, we got sixty-five here. I like that. Only fifteen thumbs up. Come on. Oh, you love night dogs. They're so sweet. Lincoln was down here, but his attention span is so short. So he's down here, and then once we turn the camera on, he left. So I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he'll come down, but I think he's up staring outside the window at the snow. So Italy, Italy is amazing. You know what? When I was in Italy, literally every meal was awesome. You know, I love pasta and all that good stuff. I could eat it every, I could probably eat the same thing every day and be happy. And I do eat, I eat ice cream every night. It works well for me. Okay. So it factor, affordable, effective, strong enough exfoliating toner for most people to use and replace a normal leave-on exfoliant contains rose water, so those with very sensitive skin might not love it, uh, but it's a nice option, affordable, rather gentle for the most part, cruelty-free, effective, super affordable. Uh, the Isn't Tree, also pretty affordable, multifunctional toner, can be used with cotton pad, with your hands, or as a mist. Refreshing, hydrating, helps balance the skin after cleansing. Fragrance, alcohol-free, cruelty-free, well-packaged, acne skin-friendly. But overall, the It Factor had to go the ordinary because it's just, when it came out, it was really a new, newer type product, in my opinion. So I gave them the point, and overall, this was the closest, <coughs> excuse me, the closest out of all of the matchups. And the ordinary had eight points, and the isn't tree had, can we get a drum roll? Seven. There we go. <laughs> So overall, the ordinary won by one point. So pretty close. I was going to put a football jersey on today, but you know, I had bought it when I was in middle school, and I tried to put it on today, and it was a little tight. It was very tight, so I didn't want to embarrass myself too much. So overall, the ordinary wins the entire championship. So we'll have to make a statue for them. <laughs> so it was very fun. Give anyway, a statue that they never picked up. Oh. This one, <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> Who was the winner of this? I think it was First Aid Beauty. There you go. It was the product of the year. They didn't pick it up yet, but when I see the First Aid Beauty rep next time, I'll have to give it give it to her. So, <laughs> okay. So, a couple questions. Someone asked if the uh, isn't tree how it compared to the more Pacific Essence, which is like one hundred forty dollars. Uh, is pretty expensive. The more Pacific, they're pretty similar in a lot of regards, except for the fact that this one's like $120 cheaper. Uh, the more Pacific contains far less ingredients and it's really nice to pat onto skin. I would never recommend applying it with a cotton pad just because it feels like a lot of it would be wasted, especially when it's so much money per ounce. Uh, I finally caved and bought the small size. I think they've got two sizes. I finally caved after years of debating it. And every time I said Sephora, I'd look at it for like $150. I could buy like eight timeless vitamin C bottles for that price or probably even more. So, but I really like it. But overall, if you're on a budget, uh, the Isn't Tree is great. And it contains a little bit more antioxidants and beneficial ingredients. It's a little bit more well-rounded in your routine. So if you're on a budget... Uh, this one's a good one. I still really like the Amore Pacific Essence. I'm glad I finally picked it up. Uh, really works well hydrating. And although I still find myself really siphoning how much I use, like there's three drops. I'll try and make do with it to make the bottle last longer. But overall, very, very effective product as well. So I don't think I've reviewed it yet, but I will after uh, this series is done. I've got a list of things. The Crave Beauty Sunscreen. I'm really... 
getting ready, excited for sunscreen week. And I'm really focusing on UVA rays because more and more research is coming out showing that a lot of skin damage is caused by UVA rays. And a lot of the sunscreens we're using aren't effective, <coughs> excuse me, aren't effective in uh, filtering them very well. Avobenzone, avobenzone, one of the chemical filters really doesn't do a good job of filtering it as much as they initially thought. And uh, some studies are even showing that after an hour that that filter is rendered useless unless you reapply it. So I'm really trying to focus on that. And in the U.S., we don't have as many options. And uh, you really have to go out of your way to find some of these sunscreens that do a good job, especially if you like a chemical sunscreen as opposed to a physical. Zinc oxide does a good job uh, protecting against UVA and UVB rays. But a lot of people don't like the uh, mineral sunscreens just because they're thick. They're not, they don't play as well with other products. And if you're a guy, a lot of them are tinted or a lot of them leave a white cast and they just aren't, don't work well unless you apply a foundation over them, especially with the white cast. So I'm excited for that. As you can tell, a lot of my sleepless nights I've been reading about it. I'm the worst insomniac in the world. So, well, maybe not in the whole world, but I am an insomniac. So yes, Crave, Purito, and Scented. I'm going to have to review both of those. So read the question. Which, uh, oh. When, when you answer it. Yes. Sorry about that. <clears throat> Are, am I changing the way I review sunscreens? I think so. I, I, I think I need to make more categories in terms of my current rating system where it just says performance. I think I need to create three subcategories. Does it perform with UVA rays? Does it help with UVB rays? Does it help with infrared I think I need to create more criteria for that just because there's so many different things. And the cameraman is laughing at something. What are you laughing at? Me? Freedom life. Let's see. I'm a little slow, sorry. A little slow. I'm more than a little slow. So UVA. Oh, UVA one. Yeah, I'm going to have to do more research on that too. It's really... It's really flashback. Yeah, that's add a flashback category. That would be something that should be added as well. So Proline. Anyone have input on Proline? I have not tried Proline at all. So I'm going to have to check that one out. Oh, <laughs> don't scroll up and read my comment about Valentine's Day. <laughs> okay, so. I think I'll move on. <laughs> this is so fun. I don't know. I just enjoy it. Thankfully, last Pizza. time. You see that? What? Pizza? Pizza. Or no. Never mind. Oh. You can't get rid of KP right below that. Tell My husband me. is dyslexic. I will mention that. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. I'm kind of dyslexic too, so. Canada. We got a Canada. How's the weather in Canada? Honey. Is that Pisa, Italy? Oh! Is that, is that how they say I don't know how it's spelled. Pisa. You see it? I don't see it, but... Tundi. You know, I think my thing is too small. Because it doesn't go up very far. We'll scroll back up. I don't know how to. I'm afraid if I scroll, I'll lose everything. I'm afraid if I touch it, the whole thing will break. Montreal? Sorry, guys. Texas, dogs and skin care. I don't see what you're, that's okay. Do you see the Tess and then Kim B and then Tundi? I'll keep trying to scroll up. I'm a little slow. It's, I guess it's way up there now. Oh, okay. P someone from Pisa, Italy? Like the Leaning Tower of Pisa? Is that what you're talking about? I think so, yeah. You've been there. Yes, we love Pisa. I've got my picture holding the tower <clears throat> and I try to take pictures of the rest of the family and it looks like they're holding the leaning tower of Pisa from like 10 feet away. So not the best with the camera. Okay. Bye. Bye Dee Dee. She has to go. Thank you. Uh, How often to reapply sunscreen? You know what? I would say as often as you can, if you're outside two hours, if it's really bright, like when I'm, on the boat and I'm out in the sun straight and I try and wear a hat and it falls off half the time, I'll reapply like every hour. 
sometimes, especially if you're sweaty or wet or anything like that. The more often, the better, especially with some of the chemical sunscreens. So, yeah, it's, yeah, two to three hours if you're outside for sure. So, although, yeah, when I'm on the boat, I'm reapplying it all the time. And even then, sometimes it's not the best. I'll still get a little bit of too much color. And I'm trying to avoid any sun. So, good sunscreens are absolutely key. So, oh, this lights are going, woo, woo. Okay. So I'm going to answer a couple of questions and I've got some products to talk about in them. Uh, the first, can they not see me? No. Well, you can't see me for a second, cameraman. No, look at this camera now. Da, 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 da. Okay, we're switching cameras. We're getting high tech now. <laughs> okay, so I was asked, sometimes YouTubers do collaboration videos where they review products or brands together. Have I ever thought about doing a video uh, with another YouTuber? And if yes, who would I choose? And I have a couple, uh, Geek Out of Water was one, and then Hot and Flashy was another YouTuber that I tend to watch. And then I kind of wanted to ask you guys, because I have thought about doing collaboration videos, I think it'd be very fun to do, uh, if you guys have any thoughts or who you wanted me to work with. That was, I wanted to ask you guys as well, because I have a couple thoughts, but I know, I'm guessing some of you will have some Gothamista, yeah, yeah. Oh, Montreal, you guys are snowed in. Oh, SkinCeuticals European. Yes, I've got a, I've got something with Mexoral. Going back to sunscreens for a second. I've picked up a uh, Garnier product with Mexoral, so I'll be reviewing that for sure. And I'll check out the SkinCeuticals one and see if I can sneak it into the U.S. Isn't that crazy that we almost have to smuggle sunscreen in over here? It's cra That is crazy to me. So, uh, yeah. Oh, somebody called me down to earth. I love that. Thank you. Paula? Yeah, Paula from Paula's Choice. My mom's name was Paula. So anytime I'm talking to my dad about skincare and I say something about Paula's Choice, he looks at me, he's like, what are you talking? Are you talking about mom? I'm like, no, no, Paula's Choice. He's a little bit out of it. But anyway, I like her because <laughs> her name's Paula. <laughs> skincare, but okay. Yes, I'll have to check out Skincare by Hiram. Yes, I'm going to have to check that one out. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to print this list off, the uh, comments, when we're done, Joe. Yeah, yeah. Because I've got some suggestions. Lots of camera. I'm gonna have to hire Ike. We need new cameras. Or Lincoln. Ike or Lincoln can work the camera from now on, right? <laughs> okay. So, L'Oreal has a lot more in Korea and Japan. Yeah. You know what? I wish in the U.S. we had some op decent options for UVA sunscreens. It's it's ridiculous how little the FDA does with that. Although I think they're starting to focus more on certain things, especially with some of the uh, cosmetics that are coming in that are fake or counterfeit. They're certainly paying attention to it. I don't know if any of you watched the Broken documentary. They had a couple uh, episodes. One was on vaping, which was very interesting. Uh, then the other one was on counterfeit cosmetics, which I found fascinating how these companies, or not companies, these I don't know, criminals, I guess, are making hundreds of thousands of dollars a day just selling fake stuff. And I think people know it's fake. So, yeah, it's it's crazy. So hopefully they'll focus on that, too. You know, I should start a lobbying group. Back to Oh, back to here. I should start a lobbying group to lobby the FDA on sunscreen changes. I don't know. That would be kind of interesting. Yes, Tinsorb, I know. that. You know, I don't think I've tried anything with Tinsorb S or Tinsorb M in them. So that is, I've been researching that a lot and just trying to, that's actually, I don't know if any of you saw my video about Akira Beauty, they're selling fake products. That's actually how I found that website was I was searching for sunscreens with Tinsorb so I could try them all because I've never tried one with it. And that was the website that popped up, which brought me down an entire rabbit hole all week of focusing on this website that's selling fake counterfeit products. So Venezuela. Venezuela. Wow. Huh? I was close to Venezuela once. Aruba. That's close, right? Sort of. It's pretty close. My uh my husband my friend when he was in Aruba actually met a girl from Venezuela and actually ended up marrying her. Now they live somewhere in Minnesota. So anyway, totally random, but since yeah. Yeah, Akira Beauty is interesting and the brands, especially Avene, when they wrote back and said that 
Cure Beauty is selling products that we haven't made for ye many, many years. And now it seems to me that they're probably just selling really, really old things. So if you're buying a sunscreen from them and it's old, you're going to get burnt probably because it's not, it's too old to provide any, any, uh, yeah, Avena Bioderma. Those are the two I want to, somehow I'm going to find a way to smuggle them to my house. So hopefully I don't get arrested for it. I would not last in jail very long, I don't think. I think I would probably, once I didn't get ice cream at the end of the day, I'd probably have a nervous breakdown. So, oh, the Purito Unscented. That's a good one. So, Candy. I like that name, Candy Candy. Does that say Candy Candy Ike? Is that what it says? The name Candy Candy Ike. It's like my dog's name, Ike. He's a baby. Is that so. a YouTuber? No, they're on the comment list. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, somebody asked, wait, who won? The Ordinary. I should just put The Ordinary out right now. So anybody that sees knows The Ordinary gets the crown. So Icelandic jails have, really? Ice cream? If I ever go to jail, I hope it'll be in Iceland where they have ice cream. Didn't they put a lot of people in jail in ice, Iceland, a lot of bankers or something in the last few decades or so? More than here. More than here, yeah. <laughs> But I, I just remember seeing a story about it anyway. So it's, you know, what's crazy is right now there's people from almost every continent. Isn't that? Pretty much. Any, everything but South America, I think. No, Venezuela. Ven oh, Venezuela. Africa. Everybody from, except Africa. Ask if there's any from Africa. Anyone from Africa, leave a comment. That would be amazing. Well, except for Antarctica. Wow. They don't have computers there, though, do they? Sure they do. Oh. Oh, you don't like the ordinary toner. You know what? I, it does have a few iffy ingredients, the ordinary toner. So you just never, that's what fascinates me about skincare, though, is that there isn't one product that will work for everyone. And then there might be one product that works for no one except for one person. So it's kind of amazing. So, oh, Colleen. And she knows that Iceland put the bankers in jail. <laughs> I, you know what? I thought the Claire's would win too, for sure. I really did think Claire's would win, and I'm surprised they didn't. But the facts don't lie, I guess. So, oh, someone's from Africa. Where? Oh, she's from Africa, but she's in Canada. Oh, uh, Technically, that counts. Maybe it counts. So, I think it counts. We've got someone from every continent. Then. Oh, that's the that's the one with the height. Yeah. A question. When you use cortisone, you mix it with something? Uh, I don't. I've got like this little cortisone ointment thing and I just put it on. Usually I've got like a couple of weird spots like on my ankles where they get really dry. I think it's at night when I'm sleeping. I cross my legs. I cross my ankles and I think they touch all night. And I think that's why I get the dry patches on them. So I just put the cortisone. You're better off if you can avoid cortisone. But once in a while, uh, it's okay to use as a spot treatment, but it can really thin skin. So you better try not to use it. That's that brand uh, Mario Badescu got in trouble several years ago because they were putting small amounts of cortisone in some of their products without listing on the ingredient list. And I think they got in big trouble for that. So it's just, uh, yeah, good molecules is good too. Okay. So I know, you know what, it's, the stuff that goes on with skincare is, it's crazy, the stuff you can find. So, okay, so really quick, I'll go to my next quick question. When I review products, my one of my criteria is manufacturing location. I've never had any issues with products usually made in U.S., Canada, Korea. What manufacturing locations would I consider not trustworthy? And I think the biggest one by far is China. I'm very concerned about products that come over from China. Uh, there's just a long list of issues with China and their products. So uh, they're also probably the biggest man manufacturer of counterfeit products. Uh, but some of the manufacturing facilities where they even just make the fake products uh, can be unsafe. Uh, lead can get in there, rodent droppings, horse PP, I guess I'll say have been found in some of the counterfeit products just because they're people making them like in their basement of their, you know, tiny house. So I'm concerned about that. I, although some of the bigger brands like elf BH cosmetics and Morphe that make their products 
pretty much exclusively in China. I'm not as concerned about them because they're huge brands. They probably have a huge manufacturing facility. And I'm guessing the brands are big enough that they hire people to do a good job diligently overseeing how things are made there. Although I'm still concerned about it, but the bigger brands, not as concerned about it. if it's some little brand that you've never heard of and it's made in China. I think it's wise to do some investigation. I'd love to go there and do more research and see what's going on there. But I think I'll wait. I think I'll wait until the coronavirus is gone because I don't do well when I get sick. So I don't like being sick. So I think Elf is made in China. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Elf, most Elf products, I think, are made in China, although they're starting to get more expensive, Elf is. So I have a feeling that maybe they'll start bringing some of their more manufacturing here, the more uh, consumers are willing to pay more for their products. That's my suspicion. So that's how a lot of brands keep their prices down, because in China, they don't have to pay anybody hardly anything to make this stuff, which is so sad in, in its own way. And then also, I don't know if any of you have, heard about the mica mines where children are being kind of employed but not really being paid to go to the mines and mine mica for eyeshadow and things like that and china is the biggest purchaser of those uh, mica so you can't make mica with that in the u.s but in china it can be made there so that's another reason it's just a lot of things have to do with labor and how people are being treated a lot of the ways and then some of the things are just being made unsafe so oh re you know what i should do that please do a video on reliable websites to purchase from yeah i should do that so oh documentary about the mica mines i know those poor kids bemidji. i oh bemidji <laughs> woo, woo. i've been to bemidji very nice lots of snowmobiling up there i like that so what serums are best to apply after the I ordinary the toner? C. I miss the vitamin C. Go up above the uh, reliable website. Oh, I'm in search for a good vitamin C serum. Any recommendations? Good vitamin C serum, timeless. Vitamin C serum is great. Always very affordable, well packaged. Timeless is at the top of my list almost every single time anyone asks for a good vitamin C serum. Uh, the other one I'm trying recently is the Isn't Tree C niacin vitamin c serum it, or it's not even named vitamin c serum we got the cream c niacin toning serum or ampule uh that's the serum component to this one that's a good option as well i like that one uh anyone else have any good options for good vitamin c serums there's a lot of them out there timeless is always at the top of my list theirs is great uh derma doctor kukadu c Serum is a good one as well. It's a little bit more pricey, but I really like that one as well. So yeah, May Love is a good one as well. The May Love Glow Maker Vitamin C Serum. That one's very hydrating as well. So yes, can I can I review sunscreen in the U.S. that has Mixoral X SX? It's La Roche Posay. Yes, I actually I think I just ordered that one because I think it's the one of the only Mixoral products that actually is sold at like Ulta or Sephora. So I think I just purchased it. I don't think I have it yet, but you know what? I'm going to, when I print this off, I'll review that one for sunscreen week too. The only thing I wasn't a huge fan of on the ingredient list was alcohol was high up there, but I don't know. Sometimes you can't get everything, but the L'Oreal C serum, L'Oreal C serum is a good one too. That that's a pretty good one. The texture is a bit different. I kind of like a water or oil-based vitamin C, but if you have oilier skin, the L'Oreal one is great. Uh, no water. It's just kind of like a cream almost. So what is my favorite site to buy from? Hmm. I don't know if I have a favorite site. Ulta is great because they offer good gift with purchases, but they're not worldwide. So for I'm getting more and more disappointed with as the days go on just they're they're uh, they're they have no good promos their rewards are terrible their prices are always they're hardly ever on sale um i don't know if i have derm store dermstore.com is great i really like them they tend to frequently have discounts that are not super exciting but reasonable discounts their shipping is fast 
and they have authentic products. They have a lot of brands. I really like Derm Store. That's a good one. And their customer service is pretty good as well. So what's a good retinol for sensitive skin? Uh, good retinol for sensitive skin. The Polis Choice Resist, uh, not resist, Polis Choice Clinical Retinol Treatment 1% is pretty good because it contains some good hydrating ingredients. So it helps it prevent your skin from getting very dry when you're starting to use the retinol. But the key is to really start slowly. But I really like that retinol. It's one of my favorites. The Obagi Retinol it comes in a white tube with a blue top. That one's good. And the Obagi has different percentages. So you can start lower. And then the next time you buy your next tube, you can get a higher percentage and work your way up. I like that one as well. The Drunk Elephant Retinol is great as well. Pretty strong, but it's as strong as Paula's Choice, but it contains some good hydrating ingredients so you don't get flaky too. So. Totally missed. Have you tried May Love and then Ghost Democracy? Oh, what? Ghost Democracy. I really like the Ghost Democracy. I like using that one in my evening routine because it feels nicely hydrating. It also contains Baku Choy in it, which is the retinol alternative. Uh, although the ghost democracy uses the uh, ester of vitamin C, so it's not as dramatic of an effect, which is why I like to use it in my evening routine because of that. Now, what was the other question? Have you tried Maylove? Yep, the Maylove Glow Maker. I really like that one. That one is on the far more hydrating side. It uses a lot of grapeseed oil in it, so it is really hydrating. So if you have oily skin, you might not like it so much, but if you have oily skin, you could also try and use it in your evening routine. So if it's oily, it doesn't bother you throughout the day. So the Purito vitamin C, I don't think I've tried the Purito vitamin C, but I think I have it. So I'm going to have to try that. Recently went on a shopping tirade and bought a lot of them, which will all probably go bad quickly, <laughs> which is why they're in my fridge right now. But as long as I get to try them for a while before they go bad, I'm happy and I'll pass them down to my what, friends. So. What category is next for the Super Bowl? Tell oh, about, tell about March, Madness. March Madness. So for March Madness, I'm going to do serums. And I think I'm going to do four brackets. And I'm going to have people vote on which ones I include. But I think I'm going to have a vitamin C serum bracket, a hydrating serum bracket, an exfoliating serum bracket, and then a possibly a retinol serum bracket. That's what I'm thinking. And having it totally be out of control. So... <laughs> Like everything I do. So that's what I'm thinking for March Madness. So when does March Madness start? At the end of March? Mid-March? Mid yeah, so I better start working right now, tonight. So I think that's going to be my next big thing. I'm pretty excited about it. So I've got so many serums that I haven't even had a chance to review. So I'm very excited. Have you ever tried Paul's Choice Nice at a 20%? Yeah. Uh, no, not the 20% one. I, you know what? I'm waiting for it to go on sale or something. Like some discount because it's $48. So I haven't tried it yet. The second a promo code works on that one, though, I'll pick it up to try. Have a little you, nervous. Have but you ever tried Alpha MD Daily? I have not just tried the MD Daily. No, not that one yet. Cosmetics, pure vitamin C. It's expensive, so you'll like it. <laughs> <laughs> My skin knows if it's really expensive to love it. So uh, let's see. The Cosmetics Pure Vitamin C. I've not tried that one, but I just picked it up from Riley oh. Rose. Is this not working again? Look at, look at the other camera. Look at this one. Yeah. Uh, so I just picked that one up actually last week at Riley Rose. Riley Rose is kind of, they sell a lot of K-Beauty brands, but they also have a lot of other brands from the U.S. And they used to be individual. Now they're in Forever 21. So I went to the Mall of America last week and it was actually nice, kind of in a way, because I was the only one looking there. I don't think anybody knew that it's there yet. So, but I picked up a few things there to try. And the cosmetics was one. And is the cosmetics brand the one that has the vitamin C crystals as well? So those I've got. I haven't tried them yet. So please review the Neogen Acure Age Cure brand. Okay, I'll definitely check that out. Oh, I've got one thing from the Sir Medic brand. And I will try it tonight. I've got one thing from them, but I, I want to pick up a couple other ones as well to use the routine. So have you ever seen what your skin looks like in the Vista machine? Hot and flashy show. Oh, yes. Yes. Actually, funny story. So I think this is about five years ago. Uh, my mom gave me a gift card to a med spa. And I went there and I scheduled a peel. 
which I'd never done before, but they showed my skin in one of those machines where it shows, it looks, it look, it looks like black and white where it shows all of your age spots. And that is what started me to become interested in skincare five years ago. Now I think this one's done. No, it's working now. This one is. Okay. Yeah. So after seeing my face in one of those machines, that terrified me. And up to then I really hadn't been, yeah, it's like a UV camera. Yep. That terrified me to see what damage I had already been doing because I was not good at using sunscreen most of my, and I wasn't even really into skincare. I think up until probably 10 years ago, I think the only products in my routine were the L'Oreal comfort cleanser in the pink jar, or pink tube, and the Clinique yellow stuff, the dramatically different. I think that was it from my age of like zero to 30. That was it. That's all I'd used. No sunscreen, no nothing. So I wonder what I'd look like if I had been using sunscreen for 30 years before that, but oh well. Yeah. Okay. Brands like Clarence. You know what? I've tried some things from Clarence and I really want to love something of theirs, but almost everything that Clarence makes has either a lot of fragrance or a lot of alcohol. And usually the fragrance is like a floral perfume scent and I just can't get past it. So I really haven't tried a lot of their other products, but I do mean, I want to try more because they're a huge brand. I mean, they're huge. So I've got to try more from them. But for me, it's like I can't get out past how everything has at least fragrance. A lot of it has alcohol in it too. But you know what I need to I need to try is the double serum. That one looks formulated a little bit better than the rest of Clarence products. I think it's their biggest selling product too. So this, I'll make that a resolution to try that one this year to at least get a review of it. So, oh, thank you. You're right. I look amazing. <laughs> I got a turtleneck on because anytime I get either nervous about something or upset, oh, I turn red. So other cameras, back. other cameras back. Yeah. So today I did a turtleneck, kind of a fun one, but anyway, okay. Never try La Prairie, please. La Prairie. You know what? They're always on like Zoo Lily or like uh, Rue La La. La Prairie's always on there. TJ Maxx even. And it's like $900. I'm like 900. I mean, it's like crazy stuff. I don't, I don't know if you're, if you enjoy paying $500 for a cream by La Prairie and hopefully it won't be fake <laughs> as long as you're not buying from a, a Cure Beauty. Cause I think that was one of the brands that a Cure Beauty that fake seller was selling to. So, uh, okay. So I'll go back really quick to the other products from China and the manufacturing locations. So obviously China is the big one I'm concerned about. Uh, actually China had a lot of dog food that was being imported into the U S this is probably about 15 years ago. And the dog food unbeknownst to the people that made it actually contained a high amount of rat poison and a lot of dogs died. And there's a huge uh, lawsuit about the company that was importing it. But so, and then China drywall, Chinese drywall, actually, it's kind of scary. This drywall is used in a lot of houses, a lot in Florida. And this drywall from China caused a lot of the houses to be condemned because the drywall would melt through electrical wires that were used. It would melt through the plumbing pipes in the house and it would cause hazardous fumes. So I, I don't know if they ever found out what was in that Chinese drywall, but some of the products imported from China are scary. I know they're doing a lot to be do make things right and do better, but I still think if you're putting something on your face or on your lips where it could be ingested, just this, the safest you can be is it's better to be safe than sorry. So, but even if it costs a little bit more money, it's not worth saving $10 to potentially have something that contains arsenic or lead in it. So, and then a couple other countries that I'm a little bit uh, cautious about Indonesia, Indonesia recently had a huge uptick in unauthorized manufacturing of cosmetics uh, and a lot of people have actually been arrested about it. Yeah. You put the good job. What? You put the article up there. Oh. You did good on that one. I wouldn't know how to do that. And then uh, Malaysia is that the other one? Uh, the wow. Article up there. Oh. You did good on that one. I wouldn't know how to do that. And then uh, Malaysia is that the other one? Uh, the wow. 
poisons in my opinion, but in certain ingredients, if there's really high percentage, it's not good for skin. So, and uh, otherwise I just kind of look at it as a case by case basis and also the manufacturing. China's by far and away the biggest concern, but there's still Florida. It's probably nice and warm there this time of year. That's when how your drywall doing. How's your drywall? <laughs> I'm guessing they've condemned all those houses, so I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, so. we're near Naples. Are you guys near Naples? My husband lived in Naples for like five years. Naples is nice. Those houses are expensive. Larry Bird lives in Naples, right? Yeah. Larry Bird must be older by now, huh? Because he was good. Oh, thank you, Candy. That's nice. So, Cameron wins the Super Bowl of Husbands. We'll give you a round of applause. Until you're replaced by Ike and Lincoln. <laughs> Once I can get their paws. Uh, so then I had one other question. Can I recommend a K-Beauty product with a high percentage of niacinamide, pre preferably fragrance and alcohol-free? <coughs> and I came up with a good list. Niacinamide is great for so many things. Brightening skin, pores, uh, helping the healthy skin barrier, uh, everything like that. So I have a good list of products that have a good amount of niacinamide and are K-Beauty. So first of all, I've got so many of them, I don't know where to start. I don't, Crave Beauty, the Great Barrier Relief. This one has a good dose of niacinamide in it. And I haven't reviewed this one yet, but I'll definitely, yeah. I'll definitely be reviewing that one. Uh, probably in the next week or so, uh, that one. Oh, should I not talk right now? No, go ahead. Okay, I can keep Put talking. On, zoom in on it. Zooming. Oh, you're zooming in. Da, da, da. I'll move the toners out of the way. There you go. Good job. So this one contains a good amount of nice cinnamon. I think it's like the, sorry, I grabbed it. Oh, one, back. two, three, four, fifth ingredient on there. And uh, another product that I'm going to review soon, and I think it's technically K-Beauty. It's made in Korea. But the brand is owned by Tarte, I believe. Or it's related to Tarte. And it's the Awake brand. And a lot of their products have fragrance in them and alcohol in them. But this one serum is one that I really like, actually. And it's Glow Pill is the name of the serum. And out of all of the Awake products, I would check ingredient list. But this one... Is really good. Nice cinema. I believe on this one's a second ingredient. I heard a click. Yes. Is that a good click? Yeah, the nice cinema is the second ingredient. It's made in Korea. I'm gonna count as a K Beauty product, just for just for argument's sake. Uh, another one, too cool for school. I think that's K Beauty. It's made in Korea, mm. and uh, their Mastic line is uh, underrated in my opinion. But this one's their tonic. And this one contains niacinamide is one, two, three, fourth ingredient on here. And this one's just like a mist. Actually, I really like it. It's really affordable too and well packaged. So this line is underrated, but I really like the tonic. And I don't think I reviewed that one yet either, but I'm going to have to add that one to my list. Other K-Beauty products with niacinamide. The uh, Cynic Essence has a good amount of niacinamide. Obviously, the Good Molecules Niacinamide Toner has a ton of niacinamide, along with the Good Molecules Niacinamide Serum. You know what? I can email you this list because it's getting long, isn't it? Because I've still got more listed of products I don't even have handy. So, uh, then I've got the, oh, I always mispronounce this one wrong, Ionic Propolis uh, Night Cream. This one's a good one. Niacinamide is in the top, I think, six ingredients. And this one's really nice and hydrating. I like to use it on my neck at night, too. Very nicely done. The Casarex Galactomyces 95. Niacinamide's high up on the list. However, if 95% of it is the Galactomyces ferment, all the other ingredients compromise 5% or less. So there's probably not that much in there, but still a decent amount. And then the Benton Snail Bee Essence. That one's a really nice one as well. Decent amount of niacinamide. The Isn't Tree C. Niacin Toning Cream. And I like the Ampule Serum of this version as well. It's really nice. And the Plant-Based Nature Solution 
uh, bamboo cream. It contains a lot of bamboo. It has a little bit of fragrance in it, though. So those were my top picks. Did I do a good job? I got a lot of options. And I also have a couple on this list of ones I didn't own. Two of them, actually. And that is the Face Theory Pore Bright N10 Serum. It uh, contains 10% niacinamide and has lac acid, no fragrance, and no denatured alcohol. And the other one that I didn't own was the, oh no, I'm going to mispronounce this one. Toso Wong Green Tea Essence. <laughs> Sarah's a cameraman's eye candy. What a lucky man. I like that. <laughs> I love you guys. I should do this every day. You know, if I did the video like this every day, I just have the best day every day. So the Toso Wong Green Tea Essence contains Saccharomyces Ferment, Niacinamide, Green Tea Extract, and it contains uh, Epidermal Growth Factors which some people like, uh, contain several different berry extracts and a small amount of witch hazel. So those are my options for a K-Beauty product with a decent amount of niacinamide in there. So uh, all those, well, worth giving a try to. And the two I don't have, I'm going to absolutely pick those up and give those a try too. So I wish I had like $5. I wish I had like, I wish I had like $500 so I could buy like every oh, essence. Wow. Oh, thank you. Oh, that's awesome. Somebody donated $20. I'm going to put that tonight towards Chipotle. And uh, that sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Will. I should, you know what, this is just so much fun. <laughs> what is a decent percent of, of niacinamide? You, you missed a ton, Sarah. Did I? Uh, you know what, I could just talk all day. And if people respond to me, that's fine. I could just keep talking, so... A decent percentage of niacinamide. I would consider 5% a decent amount, in my opinion. Obviously, there's products coming out now with 20%, which I don't know. Sometimes it can be too much, and you can get flushing on your skin or redness from too much niacinamide and dryness. So everyone's skin is totally different, too. So, um, yeah. What were you going to say? Uh, you just you just go back up. You missed a ton. I know. I'm always missing stuff. Go up to uh, start from. What's the start of <laughs> Let's see. I know there are certain fragrant ingredients that cause no harm to the skin. Yes, cucumber, vanilla. So. Oh wow. Wow! Oh my gosh! We're gonna have chipotle <laughs> and like a martini. You guys are awesome. Oh, my gosh. I'm so humbled. She didn't even ask a question. Wow. I am seriously so humbled. I love being humbled. It's a good thing. Wow. So somebody at somebody uh, Freedom Life said there are certain fragrance ingredients that co cause no harm to the skin, like cucumber, melon, and vanilla. There are, yeah, so certain, like, which is in a lot of lipsticks, vanilla. And I like that when a lipstick will have something that's vanilla in them. Vanilla is a nice fragrance ingredient that's actually good for your skin. So there are some of them that have a scent. They're like green tea. Green tea has a scent, but it's good for your skin. So not everything that's a fragrance ingredient is bad. You just always have to do a little bit digging each time. You so about BoxyCharm? Box, you know what, BoxyCharm? I thought I canceled them three months ago, and now I'm getting another box this week. I canceled them three months. I even emailed them. And now they're sending me another box. It's like, how do I cancel you? I really did cancel it. But I'm so bummed. Like, every time I get a box, like, the last time there was a Ciate blush. And I had the same thing that I bought from Sephora. And I looked. So the BoxyCharm blush, made in China. Boxing, everything else identical. The one in the U.S., made in the U.S. So it's, it's they're using the packaging, the boxes of something made in the U.S., but they're just manufacturing their Chinese factory. And it, they're doing that with everything, like the storybook palette that came out, I think, in December. I looked at Ulta at theirs. That one's made in the U.S., the one from BoxyCharm made in China. Otherwise, they look identical, and you can't tell. So BoxyCharm is like, that's why I find it canceled, because it's like 9 out of 10 products in every box is made in China. And uh, I just don't get too excited about that. I don't know. I think it's a little bit manipulative and a little bit dishonest. Especially when they say the values of things, when they say the storybook valued at $39.99, which is how much they're selling for at Ulta, 
but they're not apples to apples. They're two different products. So yeah, BoxyCharm, Ipsy does it a lot too, but BoxyCharm is starting to get a reputation for it, which, you know what, and I kind of, I get it though. They're trying to send out, you know, $400 worth of stuff for $25. And I think the beauty box subscription model is getting so competitive. When Birch, Birch Box started, I think a lot of the brands gave them samples for free so that they get the word out. Now there's hundreds probably, there's probably hundreds of companies that are selling beauty boxes and they're trying to compete. So I get it, but it's still a little bit dishonest when you're trying to say something is a Ciate blush when it's just, it's a boxy charm boxed Ciate blush. So let's see. Epidermal growth factors. Epidermal growth factors. So there's a lot of confusion around it and a lot of people don't really understand it. And I probably understand a little bit of it. I'm not going to say I understand everything about it, but personally, epidermal growth factors are kind of a new, a newer thing in cosmetics. They haven't been around for a long time. So when you're using it, and I do use a couple of products that have them in there, but you're kind of a guinea pig in a way because there's not decades worth, decades, multiple decades worth of research showing that it's extremely safe. So personally, I think you're better off to be safe. So if you have anything that might have skin cancer surrounding it, I would be careful. So it can't, epidermal growth factors cannot cause skin care where it doesn't exist. So you're not going to start using it and get skin cancer. I should look to the other camera now. Yeah. So you're not going to, if you don't have skin cancer, using epidermal growth factors won't give you skin cancer. So that's the first thing I want to say, because there are some sites out there that are kind of causing people to be a little bit scared from it and maybe not use it. But still, if you have any family history of skin cancer, if you have ever had skin cancer, if you have any unusual moles or skin tags or anything like that, I personally think you're better off avoiding it and waiting for more research to come out. Because the things I have read is that epidermal growth factors, if skin cancer is there present somewhere in the cells, it can cause them to grow faster. So it can't cause cancer. But if there is cancer there, it can make it worse. So I don't know. And personally, the research just isn't quite there to show how safe it is 10 years later, 20 years later. So, and you know what? I've been using them in some products and I haven't necessarily seen anything crazy from them. So I don't know. I wouldn't recommend spending hundreds of dollars on those products. Like BioEffect is a brand that sells products with growth factors in them for hundreds of dollars. I don't think that is worth hundreds of dollars. I would go buy the Claire's Midnight Blue Youth Drop, which is like $30. But I want, I don't think you need to spend hundreds of dollars on it. It's not going to make the growth factors any better from one product to another. So I think you're just better off, you know, whenever you can save some money and put it towards retirement or something fun for your kids, Bitcoin. you're better off that way. Bitcoin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bitcoin. That's one thing. So, okay. Anything else that I missed? Yes. Hang on. Let me see if that camera's back on. You know, next time I need to use a bigger computer because then I can read more. There you go. Big camera's back on. Okay. Next time I need to use a bigger, bigger computer. Then I can see more easier. So, so go, go, well, thank Will. Again. Yes, thank you, Will. And Meg. And Meg. Thank you, guys. Seriously. I'm just so humbled that every day I get to make a video doing something I really am passionate about and love. And I've worked at a job where I wasn't passionate about it. And every day it was like a chore. But when I do something I'm passionate about, it's like fun and I enjoy it. And I'm somebody that needs to do something I really care about. I just, I don't know. That's just me. They're people talking to each other. Oh, I like that. Uh, a 13 inch MacBook Pro. That sounds bigger than, the, I mean, I like this. It's just tiny. And you know what? I have LASIK and I can still see good, but my eyes just sometimes are blurry. Sometimes I think it's from my eye products, though. 
Sometimes I think they go, they just, yeah. Oh, thank you, Will. You're seriously too kind. Seriously. I can you see how I can scroll down. I wish I can link it would make an appearance. I hear them up there doing something, which I'm guessing means there's probably turkeys in the yard. When the turkeys come, all the uh, dogs go Is crazy. Is epidermal growth factor a carcinogen or carcinogenic? No. Uh, I wouldn't consider epidermal growth factors to be carcinogenic. Uh, I, I just, it can't cause cancer but it can potentially make cancer grow faster. So it's good and it could be bad at the same time. And honestly, I would be more comfortable if there were a lot more studies done on it and maybe studies following somebody that used it for 10 years and followed them up 10 years later. There just isn't a lot out. So I think in a lot of, you know, you're always better off being safe than sorry, just because things can cause other things to happen that you might not even know about. And there's just, you know what cosmetics is really in skincare products are so understudied. They, especially like the governments that regulate them, they're just so understudied and under tested. And I wish there was more, more studies done, especially like fragrance and alcohol. I mean, I think if it, like 20 years ago, I want to say there really wasn't much options for fragrance free products or even alcohol free. So think about how long we've come since then. And the fact that I can have a list or a, I'll, I'll take this one out, but of products that are all fragrance free, it's amazing. 20 years ago, this probably wouldn't, there probably wouldn't be any. So it's kind of crazy. Will had one, or I don't know if it's a question. You see it and you can always layer your Nice and a mind too. Yes, yes. I love layering. You guys know me. Layering anything. Uh, you know what? Next week I'll do my updated skincare routine. But it is amazing to me how I can layer like, I don't know, 20 layers of products on. And by the time I wake up, it's all soaked in. It's almost frightening how dry my skin is. But I mean, I, I layer everything on. I look like a little blue Martian with the last one I put on, the Claire's Midnight Blue Cream look like a little Martian walking around, but by the time I wake up, it's all soaked in. So yeah, layering is the best thing ever. I just, I love it. Uh, Petri. Uh, you can't Petri. scroll down for some reason. Roche, it, that one's upside down. Roche, was that Roche? Uh, La Roche, Roche Pose. <laughs> yeah, his oil is beneficial. I can't, I don't know why I can't scroll this down. Everyone should be on Trixie. Betty says everyone should be on Patreon. Oh, I like Pat Patreon is so much more fun to communicate with because you can post pictures there. That's the one thing that really annoys me about YouTube is somebody will ask me a question or somebody will say, well, that ingredients list is wrong. And I want to take a picture of the bottle and show it to them. But on YouTube, I can't. It's so irritating to me because it's like, no, I know this is the list I'm going off of and look at, but I can't take a picture because it doesn't let me. It's so annoying. YouTube has been so glitchy lately, too, with a couple of uploads. Like, Ike! Ike is here. Come here, Ike. Ike, come here, please. You gotta beat everybody. Here is Ike. Oh, Lincoln's coming. Lincoln, come say hi. He's so sweet. What a little baby. Oh, I'm glad they said hi. You know what? Next time I'll have to get the Yorkies. The Yorkies are so fun. The little... Can you see the chat better? Oh, yes. That's so much better. Voice is coming in and out. Can you hear me better? It's probably when I get really excited, I start talking too, too fast. So, so Meg McCormick, not the McCormick. Uh, that's, they're talking to each other. Coconut oil for face. Coconut oil. Yes, I like to use coconut oil. You know what? I like to use it to make remove my uh, mascara, too. Coconut oil is great. Actually, I... Oh, what's the brand? It's like a smaller brand, but they have like a coconut oil kind of going up against Kopari. But their thing is, I think it's like St. Tropez or something. But the price of theirs is so much better. So actually, I keep a little tub of coconut oil in my nightstand. So throughout the night, if my skin gets dry, I'll slather some of that on. It works miracles for everything. So, yeah. The, candy egg, the Ordinary has a good 10% niacinamide. So, yeah, the ordinary is niacinamide and zinc. And for the price, it can't be beat. 
that uh, brand and Truex at Star of the Ordinary is really such a innovative, creative person. It's really a shame that he won't be around to see his brand. And now Estee Lauder's kind of running it, which is ironic in so many respects. But sometime I'll have to do a chart of all the brands and how they are all owned by five different companies. <laughs> With the exception of a couple of little guys, they're all owned by the same companies. And it's, it's crazy. Comment. Yes, the MacBook. I'm excited about that one. <laughs> and my birthday's coming up too. So that's like a double whammy. So anyway, you guys got to see the dogs. The next time I'll have to get the Yorkies here. <laughs> I'm going to go see them shortly and check up on them. So anyway, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. if you guys have questions... Definitely, you can always email me at the info page, or if you're on <laughs> Patreon, you can send it there, or YouTube. I love writing back to everybody. Sometimes I get a little bit behind, but I try and catch up fast. So, anyway, I think that's, I think we're good for today, huh? Yeah. That was so fun. I don't know. You gotta, we gotta go meet your dad. Yeah, we're gonna go check on my dad. My dad, he needs a lot of <laughs> attention, so, along with the... Oh, Ike. You know what? Ike is so funny. He won't let anyone take his picture, but he loves being seen and getting attention. Yeah, you're just a good boy. Sometime I'll have to make a YouTube channel just about Ike because he is the most interesting dog ever. The things he does. The other day he got into the cabinet and mixed uh, chocolate pudding with uh, Crisco shortening lard. And he had it all over his face, and the whole house smelled like chocolate milk for like a week. And uh, yeah, he's smarter than I am. So Minnesota goodbye. Yes, the Minnesota goodbye. My goodbye will be like ten minutes long. So anyway, send me more questions. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Will. Thank you, Meg. Thank the rest of you guys. This is so fun, and I'll be doing it again uh, sooner. I can't believe I waited this long to do. I think it's been like three years. I can't believe I waited this long because it's so fun. So uh, thank you guys so much. And I will see you tomorrow with the review of something. I'm not sure what yet, but I'll get to the ones you guys mentioned for sure. So thank you guys. Right. Bye. Ike really wants to be on camera now.